In this video, I'm trying to reproduce a strategy that was recently uploaded and has much attention on YouTube. The strategy is called RSI Cobra, and according to the YouTube statistics, it's very popular. So let's jump on the popularity bandwagon and explore this trading strategy's results on the cryptocurrency trading market. So as I said in the intro of this video, this algorithm has a tremendous popularity and has 26k views at the moment of creating this video. So there should be something that makes this algo extremely popular within the trading community. I will get straight to the point and will just start with the indicators and trading signals that are mentioned in the video. According to the video, this strategy should be fit for cryptocurrency and it makes use of a couple of very simple indicators. Something that indicates a inclining or declining trend, a couple of simple moving averages that together form a banded simple moving average, comparable with the Bollinger Bands or Keltner Bands, and the center of this band is the 50 day simple moving average, calculated over the close price of the candles, the upper band is calculated as the simple moving average, but here it uses the high price of the candles, and for the lower band the simple moving average of the low price of the candles is used. Why it's called the Cobra is not mentioned in the video, but it sounds cool, so why not? Furthermore, the 14-day RSI indicator is used, and a 50-day moving average on this RSI indicator. Now according to the original video, the rules of an entry and exit are as follows. The price should be upward sloping for longs and downward sloping for shorts. The price is rising and should be above the Cobra moving average for longs, or the close price is below this Cobra band for shorts. The RSI uh, 50 SMA should be above the 50 level for longs and below the 50 level for short trades. Furthermore, the RSI 14 should also be above the 50 for longs and below the 50 for shorts. And the real signal for longs is when the RSI dips below its uh, 50 SMA and then goes above it again. Then we open a trade at the next candle after this cross. To go short, the RSI should get above its 50 SMA first and then dip below it again for the trading signal to go short. Now the stop loss is set below the last swing low for longs and above the last swing high for shorts. But as for the sell levels, these are not quite explained as far as I could analyze the video. And for some reason, these were always indicated at the next highest or lowest swing levels. Also, the RNR is unknown for this video. Furthermore, there is also no scenario proposed for where the take profit is never hit, but all the original signals for entering a trade stop signaling. And this is what I call a trade signal lost situation by the way. So for some of these rules I had to make some assumptions and add my own custom rules, but not much, most of the original rules are kept. I first started to code these trading rules into a trading algorithm in a Jupyter Notebook. And from there I could test out the correctness of the signals. And the first thing I did is create a pandas data frame so that I can add my trading signals to it. The next thing to do is to add the indicators like the RSI, RSI's moving average, a couple of simple moving averages to create this Cobra band. And then I asked ChatGPT to create me a function where the stop loss and take profit points are determined. Since the strategy does not have exit signals based on the used indicators for the entry signals. So eventually I ended up with this function to determine the entry and exit signals based on the initial entries. Now since the first rule of the trading algorithm is to determine if a market is rising or falling, I also had to come up with some sort of indicator to detect this. And eventually I chose to use a linear regression indicator to determine this. Then there is the thing where the RSI crossing above or below its moving average has to be detected for entering the long or short trades. For this I had to refer to the following function where crosses can be detected, but I also created a bunch of counters to see which subset of signal parameters provides which amount of signals. In this case we should look for a balanced amount of high quality signals that can get us into trades and that provide us with positive returns. Now these counters only show the amount of signals created for long trades only, and only for the BTC USDT pair. Over the dataset I used for this data frame, you see that I only have 24 long signals if I use all the parameters for a trading signal. But if I leave the RSI cross above its SMA out of the equation, then I suddenly have 524 signals. And at first I thought it was uh, an indication on how well the RSI cross filters trades, 
and hopefully get the highest quality signals. But eventually I deviated a little bit from the strategy because instead of a cross over or a cross down, I will let the algorithm enter the trade if the RSI is just above its SMA and not exactly at the cross since these can occur at moments where the other signals are not there. Maybe they would happen one day before or after the cross occurred and that would lead to a missed signal. So with this knowledge I coded this into a python file that is also usable with the backtesting engine of FragTrade. And now let's back this trading strategy to see if it comes close to the claim of 98% accuracy. In the meantime I want to thank you for viewing this video and if you like what I do then please click the like button, subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon to get notified on my future videos. All the files that I create, the strategies code, notebooks, backtest outputs and other informational blog posts on what I do are available on my Patreon site. This way you can check my work and replicate what I do, just to be fully transparent here. Now if you want to enjoy discounts for other benefits on the many trading related services that I personally use like Bybit, TradingView, Linode and many others, then you can use the affiliate links that I have in the description below. Again many thanks for your support and now let's get back to the results I got from my backtests. I backtested this strategy with two different files, one where I only do spot trading and one where I do the futures trading. The results you see on the screen here come from the tests on futures trading where you can go long and short. These results should reflect the original strategy most since long and short signals are proposed. And I must say that I'm somewhat surprised and a little bit disappointed at the same time because it seems that this trading strategy indeed made a hypothetical gain over the backtest data of uh, over 3500%. But the disappointment comes from the given data that not a single indicator has a 98% accuracy. It's uh, far from that actually. Now of course the first thing that comes into my mind is the possibility of a coding error. Or the fact that some crucial information was missing and I had to do an educated guess on the trading rule. But I never thought that this could be of such an influence that the numbers you see here are not even close to 98% and that is uh, surprising to say the least. As for the weekly performance, we can see clearly that the strategy really gets bashed when the bear market circumstances arise. The strategy does not uh, make the best use of its abilities to enter shorts when markets go lower. And although I cannot say how the spot only version will perform yet, my current impression is that the stop loss gets hit more often than intended and therefore causes more losses than wins. It's logical that the influence of the bad performance also has its impact on the drawdown and at some point it had a maximum of almost 50%. Here on the plot left it shows the distribution of the win rates for a trading strategy and the median here is around 40% while the interquartile range uh, is between 20 and 60%. There are some outliers with a maximum uh, at uh, 100 so the strategy has a moderate success with occasional perfect runs but more often it hovers around a 40% success rate, which is uh, also visible in the table earlier. The right plot displays the profit distribution, and the median profit here is slightly negative, with the IQR spanning between around minus 1000 and plus 1000. There are also several outliers extending profits to over 10,000, and you can tell by this that the strategy is somewhat inconsistent with a win rate of around 40%, with occasional strong profits, but mostly modest gains or losses. And this could be caused by the tight stop loss settings as a result of the last lower swing candle setting as a stop loss in the strategy. The tests where I only do spot trades are, are shown over here. And again, no number even reaches the 98% mark. Just like the futures trading version, it does make money, but at the expense of our nerves because a drawdown of 48%, and a maximum lose streak of uh, 33 losses after another is a nail-biting experience. The equity curve here looks even worse than the futures version, and for some reason spot trading only causes a higher peak to around 10,000 USDT profits, and with the drawdown it still ends higher in the backtest experiment, but this is not the kind of curve I get excited about. Now you might have guessed the drawdown plot here too, some sharp peaks that get higher where the bear markets proceed further, and the box plot always tells an interesting thing about the nature of the trades. In this case the median win rate is around 30%, slightly lower than the previous plot, indicating that this strategy wins less often. 
the central range is uh, between 20 and 40 percent, which shows that most weeks uh, have a low win rate. But nonetheless, there are also outliers at 100 percent. And this indicates a few highly successful weeks with nearly all trades being profitable. And these highly successful weeks might explain the steep peak in the equity curve. But unfortunately, the median profit is near zero, and this indicates that over time the strategy neither consistently gains nor loses much money. And the interquartile range is tightly packed between minus 1000 and 1000, which uh, suggests that most weeks see small profits or losses. So if I compare these boxes with those of the futures trading version, then this strategy version performs less consistently than the previous one in terms of win rate with most weeks are hovering around a 30% success rate, but uh, the rare highly profitable weeks might be the cause that this version eventually uh, ends up higher in the end balance. But also with the additional risk of additional large losses. So what can we conclude after doing a backtest of this trading strategy? Well, considering this is a test on my personal setup and there is no way of telling what or how the original video uploader came to his conclusion of 98% accuracy, I can only tell you something about my personal results. I tried to stay as closely possible to the original strategy and I think I came pretty close to that, but eventually the end result counts and both these tests show that the proposed strategy only has a mediocre return in comparison to the other algorithms I tested so far. While the end score of the futures trading version is a little bit higher than that of the spot trading one because of its better risk management abilities, I still believe that this proposed uh, trading strategy lacks certain higher level risk management features or specific settings to improve this. But since the original poster of the video is not clear on these other trading rules or show actual results uh, on which he claims the 98% accuracy, we probably have to find out ourselves where and how we can tweak this strategy for better performances. At least for me, I learned a lot coding this strategy and have gained some new tools for future algorithms. And with this end conclusion, I'm at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.